Today's topic is unfailing word of God. Are you tired of broken promises, disappointed by empty words? Look no further, for there is a promise that never fails. In the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 35, Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. And furthermore, in Matthew, chapter 5, verse 18, Jesus says, For I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not to the smallest letter or stroke of uh, the pen will pass from uh, the law until all things which it uh, foreshadows uh, are accomplished. The word of God is unbreakable, unwavering, and always uh, true. It stands uh, the test of time. For 3,000 years, we have had the Bible since Moses wrote the Pentateuch. Never changing or fading away, the word remains the same. In a world full of uncertainty, where can you find something to hold on to? The promises of God are like a firm foundation, a rock that will stand for you in the midst of life's storms. When everything else fails, God's words remains true and will never fail in the precious name of Jesus. But before we continue and unpack this topic, we invite you to like our video, to subscribe to our channel. And uh, if you are new, do subscribe and share the content with your friends, your relatives while watching this uh, video. So without further ado, let's dive into the topic by starting with the point number one god is a man of his word yes i say it again god is a man of his uh, word we all unfortunately have known people in our life whose word are worth not even a penny the words are worth nothing god on the other hand is a man of his word. His words are binding. Yes. His word and himself are one. John says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. God and his word are one. He cannot go back on his word. He is a righteous person. Therefore, whatever proceeds out of the lips of God, he is bound to perform those words. That's what righteous people do. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 8 says, You, O Lord, have kept and performed your promise because you are righteous. So when God calls himself Jehovah Tidkenu, or the Lord our righteousness, the Lord who is righteous, it truly means that he performs his uh, word. He's a man of his words. Mankind lies. Even the best of us, like Father Abraham, Father Isaac, and uh, Father Jacob, uh, they did lie. But it is impossible for our God uh, to lie to us. In Numbers chapter 23, verse uh, 19, the Bible says, uh, through the mouth of Balaam the diviner, God is not a human that he should uh, lie. Not a human being or a son of a human, a mortal, that he should change his mind. Not just God does not lie to us, he does not go back on his words. He does not change his mind. Does he speak and uh, then not act whatever he to you he will act upon it 
does he promise and not fulfill it? Whatever he promised, he will fulfill it. Abraham could trust God because God gave him a promise and an oath that he will bless Abraham. Yes. And you also today, we have uh, the promises of God, the 66 uh, love letters he wrote to us, and uh, also the oath, even in the blood of his own begotten son, uh, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 6, verse uh, 18 tells us, uh, so that by two unchangeable things, his promise and his oath, in which it is impossible for God to lie. You see, it is impossible for God to lie. We now, like Father Abraham, who have fled to God for refuge, would have strong encouragement and, and not just strong encouragement, but also an indwelling strength to hold tightly to the hope set before us. Our hope does not disappoint because God is a man of his word. So when you are going through sickness, through disease, premature death, I want you to believe in your heart, in the recesses of your heart, that God's word are true. Today as they were true yesterday in the days of Abraham, the days of Jesus on earth. And uh, he will not change his mind concerning his promises to each one of us. He said in the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 26, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, the Lord promised, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord your healer. I am the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord your physician. So this is the promise of God concerning us, and it is still true today as it was when he spoke it to Moses. And he also said in Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 to verse 26, So you shall serve or worship the Lord your God. When you serve the Lord, you worship him. He in return will bless your bread. He will bless your water. And he will take sickness away from the midst of you. That is his promise to you. No one shall be barren or suffer miscarriage in your midst or in your land. And I will fulfill the number of your days. So meaning nobody is going to die prematurely. This is the promise of God to those who are serving him. Now, before moving on to our second point, we would like to hear from you. We cherish all your prayer requests and also all your testimonies. So do send us your prayer requests and your testimonies uh, so that we can rejoice with you when it is a testimony and pray with you when it is a prayer request. Our WhatsApp number and our email address are both being displayed on the screen for you to be able to contact us. And we will start uh, interceding for you and share your testimony with others so they also can be blessed. So point number two, believe that God loves you as much as he loves his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. The struggle that many Christians have is that they have not understood the new birth. When Christ gave his life on the cross, God was saying to the whole world that your life is worth the life of my son, Jesus Christ. So the problem that many Christians have, even still to this day, is they do not accept this radical love God has bestowed upon them. We must discover the unending love, the unmatching grace, unmerited favor and divine empowerment, and the unbreakable promises of God. And to do so, 
there are no shortcuts. You and I must dive into his uh, 66 uh, love letters from Genesis uh, to Revelation. As we read those letters, as we meditate on uh, the content of those letters, we end up discovering his grace, his love, his forgiveness. And as we immerse ourselves in his truth and experience the peace that surpasses all understanding, we will now be able to accept that God loves us as much as he loves his only begotten son, Jesus. His promises are for you, for me, and for all who will believe in this good news. You are accepted in Christ Jesus. So don't ever feel rejected. You are accepted. God has opened his arms wide to embrace you into his uh, bosom. And in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6, he says, To the praise of uh, the glory of his grace, by which he, God, made us accepted in the beloved Christ Jesus. God loves you, I say again, as much as he loves his only begotten son, Jesus. When he adopted you in uh, his kingdom, he also decided that your life was worth the very life of his son, Jesus Christ. So whatever you will ask God in the name of his only begotten son, Jesus, provided what you are asking, is actually written in our 66 love letters, God will give it to you. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 32, Paul is trying to bring this point home. He says, God, who did not spare his own son, Jesus, had he delivered Jesus up for us, or to die on the cross, how then do you think that uh, God will not, with the sacrifice of his only begotten son, Jesus, also freely give us all things? If he gave his son for you, what is it that you think that you are asking of him that he will not uh, give it to you? Never think that God uh, loves other believers more than he does you. That is a lie from the enemy, even uh, the devil. God has no favorite child. He loves you as much as he loves his only begotten son, Jesus. In the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 34 to verse 35, Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive, and tonight also I, Jeremiah, and I perceive that God shows no partiality. In other words, God has no favorite child. But in every nation, in Scotland, in Wales, in England, and wherever you are, in Ireland, in France, in every nation on earth, whosoever fears God and works righteousness is going to be accepted by God. So God is not trying also to make up his mind whether he wants to give you any of the promises contained in the Bible. He already said, yes, whatever you want from me that I promised in my Bible, I have already said, yes, provided you are in Christ Jesus, my beloved son. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, Paul tells us, and today I tell the church, for all promises of God contained in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation in Christ Jesus are yes. And in Christ Jesus, they are Amen. And so be it in your life. The glory of God through each one of us. So stand firm. Hold on to his promises found in the Bible. And trust in the unfailing word of God. For his promises are yes and amen. We have reached our last point in this topic. 
I want to remind you that we are on GBN UK with our program of voice of healing every Thursday at 9.30 p.m. And the repeats are on Friday at 2.30 p.m. And on Monday at 5.30 p.m. On Freeview, it is channel 66. And on Sky, it is channel 582. So point number three. Keep petitioning your loving Father in heaven. Yes. Don't just pray once and then quit. I want you to be persistent in your prayers. When you approach God in prayer, you need to know that uh, he is a loving Father and uh, he has uh, your best interest uh, at uh, heart. In the book of Matthew, chapter 7, from verse 7 to verse 11, Jesus is teaching us the foundation of prayer. He says, ask and keep on asking, and it will be given to you. Don't just ask once, but ask and keep on asking, and it will be given to you. Seek, don't just seek once, and seek. Keep on seeking and you will find. Knock, don't just knock once and keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. Why? Because everyone under the sound of my voice who keeps on asking receives and he who keeps on seeking finds and to him who keeps on knocking it will be opened. Oh, what man or woman or parent is there among you who, if uh, his son asks for bread, will instead give him a stone? God does not have a stony heart. He's not an austere person. He's not a harsh taskmaster. He's a loving father. Or oh, if your son asks for a fish, will instead give him a snake. God is not the one who is giving you something that is venomous, poisonous, like a serpent. There's a difference, a clear difference between the work of the devil. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy, according to John 10, 10. But God, when he comes, it is to give you life and life in abundance. And if you then, evil, sinful by nature, as you are, you still know how to give good and advantageous gifts to your children. So how much more will your father who is in heaven, perfect as he is, give what is good and advantageous to those who keep on asking him? So he's going to give you something that is good and advantageous to you because every good gift and perfect gift never comes from Satan, but it comes from above, from our Father of the light with whom there is no variableness or any shadow of turning. You need to believe that uh, his words to you will never return to him a void, for he does not make empty promises to his children. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, from verse 9 to verse 11, Isaiah received the oracle of the Lord, and the Lord said through the lips of Isaiah, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth under bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So you see, when the rain and the snow come down, they always have a resort on the ground. They cause the ground to bring forth and to bud. And the Lord says his word does the same. So shall my word be to those who receive it. So my word 
that goes forth uh, from my mouth will do the same thing. It shall not return to me void or empty, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I send it. If it is for your sickness, for your disease, for your finances, for your family, the word of God that uh, proceeded from his lips will uh, prosper in the things for which uh, God sent it. It will accomplish what uh, is pleasing unto the Lord. It will never return to him void. His words are binding so he cannot change his uh, mind or alter his uh, promise uh, to any of his children. In the book of uh, Psalm 89, verse 34 to verse 35, God says, my covenant. So in the covenant, you have uh, the promises or the terms of the covenant, and you have uh, the oath or the blood that was cut as a binding element. So my covenant, even the new covenant, I will not break. So God does not break his covenant with his people, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn in my holiness, I will not lie to David. The word David in Hebrew, David in English, David means beloved. So you are the beloved of the Lord and the Lord has sworn in his holiness that he will never lie to you. So whatever he said to us in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, he did not lie to us. He is beloved and he intends to perform it in our very life to save Hallelujah, us to deliver us, to prosper us, to heal us the same way he did for David, his uh, beloved. And in 3 John, verse 2, John says, Beloved. So John is thinking in uh, Hebrew, he's writing in Greek, and he says, Beloved, or David, beloved, I pray or I wish that you may prosper in all things and be in health. Just as your soul prospers. And tonight, you also can become a child of God so that the, the promises of God are going to be unbreakable in your life. And you can take God's word at face value and he will watch over his word to perform it. But he only does so for his children. His beloved children who have accepted his son Jesus because all these promises, unbreakable promises, are only yes and amen when we are in Christ Jesus. So now is the time for you to surrender your life to my King Jesus and you will be a partaker of uh, these unbreakable promises. So I want you to surrender your life and say this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. I repent of all my sins because I was born in sin, even the original sin of uh, Adam. And uh, let your blood today wash away all my sins and make me as white as snow in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you send your spirit of adoption, that tonight I will be adopted into the family so that you can love me as much as you love your only begotten son, Jesus, so that I can have access to all the promises contained in your 66 love letters from Genesis to Revelation. And today I surrender my life to you, Jesus. Be Lord, King, over my life and let me be your brother and the son of our father in heaven the daughter of our father in heaven in jesus glorious name i have prayed amen